You there, Wendy? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Sorry, you were muted. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, we can see your screen just fine, and, and the um, recording is going. Good morning. How are you? The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Welcome to VSA Florida Modern Skills. Uh, this is a, an interesting program that I think that you'll find um, helpful in especially dealing with um, transition aid students. This is a program that uh, brings, of course, online technology uh, and merges it along into creative expression. So I want to start off by explaining who VSA Florida is. I know that, that some of you may not have heard of us before. We are the state of Florida, the state's organization on arts and disability. We provide art experiences for people with disabilities along with others. It doesn't just have to be them. And our state office is here on the campus of USF. We're part of the College of Education in the Special Education Department. We are also part of a larger picture, part of the uh, international network of VSAs. They uh, are headquartered at the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts, and we are uh, actually a program of their education department. VSA works to increase arts and education and cultural opportunities for people with disabilities, but our main mission is to embrace a culture where people can um, participate in and enjoy the arts. Uh, this is the mission. This is really a national mission or international mission. And I'm not quite sure if, if all of you know where VSA actually started or where it came from, but Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith, who's one of the sisters, of course, Eunice Kennedy uh, was JFK's sister that did Special Olympics, and Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith, her sister, is the founder of VSA, um, which used to be called Very Special Arts, but it's no longer, that term is not, isn't used anymore. We found that it was really not very PC. So for, for the most part, uh, it just goes by the letters VSA. The arts, while a beautiful voice of self-expression and with the ability to cross all cultural boundaries, is a profound tool for learning. This is probably my favorite quote from Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith, and I hope that you'll take it to heart. Uh, a, a VSA advocates the arts as a way of communication and a means to unite people of all abilities. VSA modern skills. Let's just chat about that for a minute. So as I, I told you that this is going to meld online technology with creative expression, we first got involved with this with the Art Thread Foundation, um, the, and we've sort of turned it into a modern skills program that we're moving forward for our transition age students. The program encourages participants to engage in art-to-art -art conversations by creating threat. And we'll get into that just a little bit more in a few minutes of how that actually happens. The gallery, when you take a look at it, which I'm going to show you online, is basically an art-to-art -art conversation. Some people look at it as an online graffiti wall. Uh, I like to look at it as social networking with paintbrushes. Uh, it's a place to connect through creative expression. You know, social networking is such a, a high point in all of our students' lives and, our, and even in our own workplaces now that this is a way for students to finally have a chance to um, connect without using words and just using what they know. What you see here um, on the screen are the guidelines and internet requirements. And before we go into the classroom, or, uh, or a community center, wherever there's a computer lab, we always want to make sure that we have these particular guidelines in place. First off, you really want to have kids of transition age, which are middle school, high school, and, and even beyond. 
we found that the younger students, while they enjoy the program, it's probably not uh, going to help them in moving on into learning some of the um, technology pieces and graphic design pieces that they could use later down the road. I really like to see where you have at least um, one computer with two students. If you if you can give a one computer to one student, that's even better. Uh, the next screen is going to show you really the, the most, this is the key part to the program. You've got to have broadband access to the internet, and you already have to have the browsers installed on a Mac or PC. You cannot use a dial-up modem. So the browsers that can be used, as you see, uh, version 7 or up of Internet Explorer, you can use Safari, which is on a lot of your um, your Mac programming and your iPad, et cetera, and Foxfire version 3 or up. You probably also, when going into the classroom, uh, need to make sure that the school provides permission for VSA Florida website to be able to come up. Uh, there's always a lot of firewalls up in, especially in the public school system, that they don't allow it. So um, before you even begin a program, these are the kind of things you have to go into the classroom before the first day and work out those kinks. You can usually work that out with the IT person there in the school system. Make sure that there's keyboard, mouse, monitor working program. And when I say keyboard, mouse, and monitor, make sure that they are accessible to all the kids. You need to think about the type of students that you're going to be working with. Uh, what type of disabilities they may be uh, dealing with, and make sure that they have the appropriate uh, components for the keyboard um, or mouse that they might need to be able to navigate the system. Adobe Flash Player you really need. Um, you're going to be able to show um, uh, slideshows, and you want to be able to have a USB port, a little flash drive that you can you know, move uh, media around from computer to, co to computer if you need to. So I'm going to backtrack just slightly and talk about what a residency program is. That when I start to talk about residencies, we're, we're mostly talking about residency program right now with our thread. But in general, when VSA goes out into the classroom, we, we try to bring in, we know we don't try, we always bring in teaching artists trained to work with people with disabilities. They're used to, they, they do get professional development with us on how to be, uh, make accommodations and modifications in, in, the, in the best settings as possible. They will visit a site for eight one-hour sessions working with the same participants. That can be done in, in six one-and-a-half-hour sessions. We, we tweak it in various different ways, but for sustained learning, we found that eight sessions is, is a necessary component. Uh, again, the adaptive materials, the artist is going to be also teaching the teacher that's in the classroom. That's one of our goals when we go in is for a teach-the-teacher the situation so that whatever we do, the, the same thing can move on throughout the school year and the way that they are dealing with art programming in general. What we look for in outcomes is sequential learning, which is why we were talking about the uh, eight visits. We want to definitely see increased creative thinking skills, problem-solving strategies, and of course, uh, a means of expression. So here, here you go. Take a look at what, this is what the front page, when you go on to the, the website, which um, is www.vsafl.artthread.org. There are several different art thread sites, so I just want to make sure that I clarify this. This is basically what we're going to see. When I, go, when I show you the online screen, We'll actually work with the program for a few minutes. But I want you to see what the basic idea looks like here. The, 
they have a lot of, on this site, they have a lot of tutorials that you can visit to give to kind of update you um, on how to move through the program. Uh, maybe refresh yourself. I'm going to see if this is going to work, this particular one. And you can hear it. See if I can get the volume up enough. Get some pointers on how to view art on the gallery. Wherever you are on the gallery, when you want to get back to the beginning, simply click on the logo at the top of the page. This way, you can never get lost. No matter how many pieces of art you've looked at, no matter how many pages you've navigated through, just find that logo at the top of the page, and it will get you back to the beginning. When you first come to the site, you'll notice the All Art button is highlighted. This means you're looking at all of the art randomly. Later, we will look at other ways to view art, using threads or even the search engine. Based on the kind of monitor you have, you probably will have to use the scroll bar to see more art towards the bottom of the page. You may have a laptop. You may have a 21-inch monitor. But that scroll bar will surely help. Another way to see more art on the page is to use the zoom tool. As you can see, the zoom tool makes the art smaller and therefore allows more art to be shown per page. You know, we at ArtFred want you to remember who and what we're about. But after you've read the text on the gallery page, there's a small button at the top of the page that will hide that text and allow you to display more art on the gallery page. Located on both sides of the art, you will see some page arrows. Those arrows can be used to jump up and back a page. This will allow you to navigate through large amounts of art very quickly and to get an idea of all the great art that's been posted by other gallery thrivers. Well, that's the end of this section. We hope this brief overview gets you started. When you get a chance, look at the other tutorial videos. They take a more detailed look into all the other features of the gallery. But most of all, remember, have fun and connect, create, and thrive on the Arsfred Gallery. OK, so what you, were, what you were listening to, that was one of the founders of the Arsfred Foundation, um, uh, Jay Klein. And, and on this website, like I said, you may not have been able to hear this real clear because I just had it embedded into my PowerPoint, but you can actually find all of these on the site, the tutorials that will you know, get you going. If any of you are interested in actually becoming an ArtThread instructor, um, I want to encourage you to contact me and make sure that we, we get a little bit more in-depth training because this webinar is not necessarily training you to be an ArtThread instructor, what it is is just giving you an overview for, again, any parents that want to see what it's about or instructors that might be, potential instructors that might be interested in doing this program. Okay, so this is, this is the online art making tool for ArtThread. It's called Splash. And as you can see, let me see if I've got, I do have a pointer. So uh, it, it has various different components to it. And again, when, when I show you the online piece, we'll, we'll actually play with this. Uh, but what you can do is you can, you can pick paint brushes, you pick your colors, you can pick the type of swirling and movement that you want. You can, uh, you can upload shapes, uh, upload pictures onto the screen, and then edit. Uh, you can create, save, upload again, and recreate on the same image again. And all the while, you're saving them into your gallery. So obviously, this is, this is, this is a, uh, a quick type of program. There's a lot of uh, immediate gratification that students get out of uh, creating something quickly. Uh, and efficiently. 
And then here's just a couple images I want you to see. And these were made with just a, a couple clicks. Click, click, click. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do at this point is let me see if I can. I'm going to bring on the online. Oh, hold on a second. Let's, let's go to here first. When you click on a particular image, one particular image on the gallery, this is what you're going to see. This is the page that's going to show you who created it, what area of the state they were from, what region. As you know, many of, well, if, you, if you've seen one of our VSA maps, we're segmented into five regions. So here in the Hillsborough County area, that's region four, we try not to use any student's last name, so everybody who will just have a first name, they'll uh, pull the image up. You can see it. If you like it, then you can add it to your favorites. As you can see, any time a heart comes visible, you can add this into your own favorite group, or you can share it with a friend. You can also view it in a thread. And that's the whole concept of thread, of the art thread, is really connecting people to each other through the art by telling people that you enjoy their work or you enjoy the commonality of the theme of the thread. So let's say someone decides to upload a picture or create a thread uh, that they entitle Bert then someone can now, anything that reminds them of a bird, an image of a bird, uh, a feeling of a bird, whatever, they can add that to that thread using images that are already in their own gallery. And I know it sounds a little confusing. It'll become a little bit more clear as we, as we move forward just a little bit. I'm going to back up for one minute here. This is what I wanted you to see. I wanted you to know that um, there are 21 brushes in here. And also, I forgot about to telling you that this key right here is that it's an animation brush. And again, as we start to make the work, you'll see what I'm talking about. OK, now let's move forward. This is done by actually one of the high schools. This is their thread that they created. We did a residency last year um, in Polk County, and this is the artwork that came out of that residency. Most everything here, let's see, all of these were done in Splash. This is a collage that was made, and this was a collage also that was made that was done just on your regular table an image, a JPEG taken of it, and then uploaded into the gallery, and then additional pieces added to it. And once again, a little overview of what Modern Skills, what our program does, using universal and safe language of art, bridges the gap, across language and culture provides continuous support. I will tell you that the Art Threat Foundation is very good about giving support when you do have problems. And I'm always here to help you also. And it can be used in communities all over the country. So it is a way, and actually the world, where you can connect. All right, I think before I finish up with the PowerPoint, I want to, let's see here. No, nope, not going to let me do that. Bear with me here for a moment. OK, so this is not working. OK, now we're here.
There we go. Now, this is what I wanted you to see. So this is now we're on the actual website. So what you'd like, what I'd like for you to do when you decide that you're ready to get started is you'll register here, and it's just like any registration form. You'll walk through it, and I can here I'll show it to you real quick so you can see what that looks like. And it's important for you to fill out all the desired um, areas here because once you start selecting things, like when you select Florida here, it's going to take you down and, it, and it'll, it'll bring you down to actual, let's say we're going to be in Hillsborough County here. It'll continue down to your school type and it'll take you all the way through to where you are. Let's say you're going to a high school, and it'll actually let you go to what school you're in. But anyway, that's just a, a basic idea of what the registration form looks like. Let's back up for a second and go back now to, I'm going to sign in as myself. Okie dokie. So this is your first, this, you can see what, what is in my gallery right now. This is my own work that I've created. And it's not that exciting, but I did have fun creating it. So this is what's called my gallery. I also have my favorites that you can take a look at. And you're going to hear me interchange the two. Now let's say I want to create some artwork right here. Let's go to that big splash online program. Here you go. So we're going to create a new piece. And you have a choice of how you want to, what size you want to create this piece in. We encourage everybody to use the huge size because it gives the most uh, the highest pixel and the best image if you're wanting, wanting to reproduce it, but you certainly don't have to do that. Okay. Here you see your little cursors and they move around, they follow my, they follow my cursor pen. And before I click, I want to get my settings correct. So let's take a look at all these different paintbrushes that we have available. Remember I said there's 21 of them? Here they are. So you use this little slider, and you can slide it to decide what kind of image you want to create. We call this the flutter tool. All right. Let's try some circles or something swirly. Here we go. Let's try that. Then you can pick what size you want the image to be. I'm going to move that. You can decide if you want it smaller, larger. Let's go right there. And here's your answer, whether you want it to move or stay put, whether you want to animate it or not. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to animate continually on the page once it's laid down. It's just going to animate as it's creating the image. So let's try it animated. Now you're going to pick your color wheel. So you have a choice. All right. So you have a choice here in your variations of color. Well, first off, let's take a look here. Here's your, here's your cursor to pick what color scheme you want to be in. So you can move it around on the color wheel and decide where you want to be. All right, so let's try right here. Green's my favorite color. And then you have a choice of how you want it to vary, how often you want it to vary. Not so much, a lot. We'll just keep it in the middle right now. And this is the opacity slide. Whether you want that to be very opaque or whether you want it to be rather, rather translucent or not, the image. Okay, let's see here. Let's give it a little bit more opacity. 
Okay. This is your sling tool. Sling, it looks like something has got a bunch of springs in it. Let's try something. Let's show you what that looks like. I'm going to click and drag. There you go. That gives you an idea of what the sling tool looks like. You can always undo. There's only one undo time, though, so let's, you can't go back more than once. This is your clear tool. If you want to just toss some white image, color image, it's a big paint, a big paint bucket. And, and I don't really tend to use that very often, uh, and I don't encourage kids to use it a lot because it covers a lot of space. A really important tool is this one right here that I'd like you to see. This is where we're going to start to upload images. So you, you have the, the set images that they give you. There's just a few of them. Let's try this. So let's say we click on our stop sign. You can drag it in and click, click, click. Let's try something else. Click, click, click. Now you can do free dragging, and you can also allow for rotations of these images. All right. You can choose sizes, etc. But where you do the uploading is right here in this folder. So let's say you have an image that you're interested in including into your, into your picture. It's just like uploading anything else. So I'm going to go to my pictures. I'm going to look for some images. Let's see here. I like this one. All right. So I, it's now uploaded into this grouping. You click on it. Decide the size you want. And click. There it is. <laughs> OK. So much for that fun. Let's go back. Try something else. I need no color comes out. Because those are the very we're on a variation. And the question was, how do I know what color that I'm working with? So right now I'm working with a high variation, fairly high variation in the greens and probably blues. So let's try changing those colors. Low variation. Let's come over into this area here. And let's lower the opacity just a little bit. All right. Let's try this again. And let's go with a smaller size. Maybe not that small. OK. See, lower opacity, more translucent. Well, as we come across here, we'll have different colors. All right. So let's try let's try some of our paintbrushes one more time. Mm. 
not letting me right this moment. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Let's not animate it. Let's find just a simple little paintbrush that I, you can see. Try some stars. Actually, let's animate that because I want you to see what that looks like. So if I just click it and hold it, Hold. Now, say I don't like that, I can undo it. That one I can't undo because that one was two clicks back. Okay, well, that's a basic idea of how this program works. There's a lot more to it, but we would have to introduce that to you in an in a actual training program. But that gives you an idea of some of the tools and, and how to upload materials. Now, let's save this. And now, I have to title it. So, I'm going to title it Ladybug. And I'm saving it. And now, I have a choice. I can just continue drawing back on it if I want. I can start a new drawing and not move any farther, or I can add this to my gallery. Well, I'm going to add it because I want to know how to start saving things. It gives you a chance, if you're not happy with the image, to delete it if you'd like. It shows you what the image looks like. And see, I didn't use all my workspace, but there was more workspace to be had. You can leave a comment if you want and save it. Now this is a very important part. Do you see where it says awaiting approval? What we have built into this particular VSA Art Thread program, which is different than many of the Art Thread programs, is an approval process. That means nothing on this site that contains faces or inappropriate language or titles or suggestive images can be included on this site. So we have people all over the state that will approve these pieces as they're uploaded. So I'm, I'm able as an approver to, be, to go ahead and approve this piece. So I'm going to do that because I want you to see what happens. You as a teacher will become an approver, will make you an approver. So I look at this and say, well, there's nothing inappropriate, so I'm going to approve it. All right. So let's go back. And now you see that it's, a, it's in my gallery and it's approved. So let's take a look at these icons real quick. Of course, if I want to add it to my favorites, I can do that. It says save Ladybug as into my favorites. You can do this as you browse through anybody's gallery, not just your own work. I can share it with a friend. I can view or respond. I can start a new thread. Or I can merely delete it if I don't like it. And I can download it onto my computer and save it as an image to be used for something else. If I want to put it, you know, say I want to put it onto a t-shirt and I, want to, I know a company that I can send a JPEG to, I can do that as well. Uh, if I want to share it with a friend, it tells me that I have to start a new thread or I have to include it in a thread before I can share it. So let's start a new thread with that one. And I'm going to call this insects. And it asks me, do I want to lock it 
or keep it open. If I lock it, then no one else can take a look at it, just myself. If I unlock it, it's open for people to respond to. So I'm going to keep it open because I want people to be able to respond to what I'm doing. Tells me congratulations, I've started a new thread. Click here to view the thread. And so here I've started a thread. I just clicked on view all images because I want you to take a look at all the images that we have on our site right now. We have loads and loads and loads of images that have been done through all our residency programs. We do approximately 20 a year. We're always open to do more. The price is $500 to be able to bring an artist for eight weeks into a classroom. So be sure to contact us if you're interested in that sort of a thing. All right, so I'd like to go back now to uh, PowerPoint. There's lots more to learn on this, and, and I, I don't have the time to continue um, with the program, but I do want you to take a look at um, a couple more images. Let's see here. I think this is where we left off. I'm once again going to show you just a little bit of artwork that's created. This, this one right here, as you can see, does have uploaded images in it. And then it was, it was painted on afterwards. These two were do, done strictly using just the splash program. Again, a collage, splash, total splash program, and this had an image that was painted on also. So we've got lots of training and learning opportunities for you. Uh, if you are a teaching artist and you'd like to, to um, learn the program and work with us, please don't hesitate to contact me or, of course, Marilyn Farber, who's here with me today. Uh, we're always open. We would like for you, if you're not a teaching artist already with us, please apply for a teaching uh, position with us by filling out an application and sending us your resume. And I think I'd like to thank you at this point for joining us, parents. If you'd like to uh, contact me, I'm, I would be happy to come and uh, present. If you're in a, in a, in a, in a homeschool situation, we can, you, know, you have computers that can be used, we certainly would be happy to send an artist to that group as well. And if you're a teacher in the, in the classroom, then of course let us know. We offer uh, an eight-week residency actually two this year coming up for every county in the state. We will, be, we will be offering two free ones. And then after that, after those two are filled, then we will be charging the $500. So apply early for those residencies. So thank you very much. And Amber, I appreciate you inviting me. And it, well, I think I'd like to open this up for some questions if, if anybody has any right now. Okay, uh, no su questions were submitted um, via the GoToWebinar. What I can do is go ahead and unmute the attendees, and if they have any verbal questions, since there are only two. Okay. Um, okay, so right now, okay, Brenda so right and now, Lois, you are unmuted. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Does anybody have, Does any, anybody questions? have any questions? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, you. I can hear. You. Oh, excellent! This is Brenda. Hi. Um, thank you so much, Wendy, for that presentation. Um, I do have a question. I was wondering if possible, can you talk about how the Art Thread program would um, relate to the 
teaching standards or curriculum standards? Like, what would we use um, for for the schools? How would we approach this? Well, we provide you with a curriculum map that will address that those issues for sure. You the the Oh, okay. Sunshine State standards are incorporated into the curriculum map of how we build the program out eight weeks, and then you can modify it to how you see, you know, fit. How oh, that's awesome! But we do have okay. that already. Thank you. That's great. Yes, yes, yes. And and are you talking about specifics? Is there a specific a standard that you're wondering about? No, I was just no. It's great that you already have the CMAP already done. That's wonderful. What a nice yeah, relief. Yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, it looks like a great program, and I would love to have additional training. I'll write you separately about that. But yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. terrific. Well, because you're down in the Naples area, is that right? I'm in Sarasota. Sarasota. Okay. So yes, we we have Bonnie Hammer. That I don't know if you know her. She's down there working with the program, and she'd probably be. I'd probably pair you with her to learn the program for in depth. Okay. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Thank you. All right. Just contact. Give me a little note, and and we'll we'll you know get that together. You know to give you a chance to learn it more in depth. Okay. And then also I might add that in the fall we will do regular training with Bob Rothschild, who is the president of the Art Threat Foundation. We do one with him at least once or twice a year, where everybody has a chance to get on and really get to the, the nooks and crannies of this program, much more than I'm even capable of doing. He knows this program inside and out. So you'll have a chance to speak to him also. OK. That sounds great. Good. Well, thank you for, for being on. Was there anybody else that we had? Amber, was there anybody else on, the, on our program? Um, no, uh, the other attendee is offline now, so they're not even participating. Okay. So with right. that, 